Hey everybody, Mike Burkholder, East County Today, here with John Fink, Rotarian, Realtor, Planning Commissioner. Mm -hmm. How are you doing today? I'm doing excellent, sir. Thank you for asking. So we're going to talk about real estate today and some of the things going on in the market, get John's opinion. For everybody that doesn't know you, can you give a quick little uh, rundown on who you are and your experience? Sure. Um, I've been in Brentwood for over 14 years, uh, my wife and my daughter and I. Uh, a local realtor, property manager, uh, been on the Brentwood Planning Commission for almost eight years now. Uh, member of the Rotary Club for 12 years, Brentwood Rotary Club, past president, 2012-2013. So I uh, like to keep myself busy, uh, do a lot of volunteer work in the community, and uh, you know, just enjoy being a member of Brentwood. And you're a big uh, bicyclist? Yes, yes. <laughs> My wife and I are enth cycling enthusiasts. Uh, we're members of the uh, Delta Peddlers. So you'll see us riding around town every once in a while. So we, uh, we, we enjoy that a lot. Cool. So why real estate? Why'd you get into it? What draw you to it? Um, about uh, 14 years ago, I was just finishing a 20 year career in the credit union business and I was just looking for something different to do. Um, we had bought our second home by that time and I really just felt, you know, being that I had a mortgage experience through the credit unions and working in the, you know, buying a house twice, um, I really enjoyed it and I had a knack for sales. Um, so the market at the time was doing really great. So, you know, decided to make that jump and it was great because that also allowed me to spend more time with my daughter uh, who was going through middle school and uh, it, was, it, was a good, it was a good decision at the time. And what's been kind of the most rewarding thing about being a realtor? The most rewarding thing about being a realtor is how you're changing people's lives and how you're setting them up for the, securing their future, so to speak. Um, I get the biggest joy in the world when you get a first time home buyer and they realize this is mine. This is my house and I can decorate it the, want, the way I want to and, and I can do things, you know, and, and be a part of a community. It gives you that sense that I belong to the neighborhood now instead of, you know, um, renting and being, you know, transient to some extent. But that to me is the biggest joy I get out of, out of this work. Sure. So I guess what everyone really wants to know is what... What's the market out in East County? I mean, mm -hmm. what's kind of the average home price? I don't know whether it's Brentwood or East County. Um. Well, you, you, if you wanted to take just East County, right now we're probably at a median home price of about $550,250 as, as of this last month. Um, so the market is healthy. Um, any, any market that has inventory that's um, anywhere from three months or less is considered healthy. And what I mean is, if you have homes that are on the market that would sell in three months, that's considered a healthy market. Um, we've been doing quite well as far as the average days of sale. It, houses are sitting on the market like nine to 11 days instead of months like it was back in the Great Recession. Um, and then we have a nice mix out in East County where we have new home construction and resale and it's a nice balance right now especially in Brentwood there's a really good balance between the two where you're building new neighborhoods and creating new neighborhoods but you're also reinvigorating some of the older neighborhoods with the people that are coming to live here so do you think at, at 550 you're, you're gonna start pricing people out or is that it well it depends you know if you're looking at someone that's coming from the inner inner valleys, you know, the Central Contra Costa or even Silicon Valley, you know, we're a bargain. Um, I just read an article in the newspaper today in a city in, in Los Altos, which is next to where I grew up in Sunnyvale. The average price of a home in Los Altos is three, uh, $3,500,000. So, you know, you're looking at 550000 versus three and a half million. Yeah, I'll make the two hour commute, you know, to, to especially when you're living in a great community. Um, I still think that incomes haven't kept up with the pace of the values of properties. So when you start getting into that 550 range or higher, you're starting to price out the first time home buyers. And then under that 550 value, you really are looking at a very tight inventory for those people. And so I guess I'll rephrase that blue collar workers. It's a little tough. It's a little tough. It's a little tough. Um, you're probably, you know, honestly, I, I you're looking at Antioch in a, in a good price range. And quite honestly, in my opinion, I think Antioch is a real bargain right now. I think the neighborhoods are starting to come back um, in full force. Um, you're getting to see some new construction going on in Antioch, which is going to be good for their economy. But, you know, you, you have a real opportunity where someone could buy a, a blue collar worker could buy a house for 
three hundred seventy-five or four hundred thousand dollars and see some appreciation down the road. And so then, as far as home prices go, what about the rental market? What's that look like? Rental market is really crazy right now, and that has to do with the fact that there's very few homes on the market as rentals. Um, there were a number of investors that bought in Brentwood and East County and purchased properties as rentals back in 2010 and 2011 and 2012. Well, these investors are now cashing out. And what it did was it dramatically decreased the amount of rental homes that were available in East County for people to, to rent. Not everyone's ready to buy yet. So now we're seeing, you know, I'm, I'm put a home on the market yesterday, a nice home in Garen Ranch for $2,500 a month, and I've already had 12 phone calls in not even 24 hours. Because it's a very, very high demand for rentals in good neighborhoods. But as long as those investors continue to cash out, the rental market is going to continue to shrink and it's going to make it tough for even people to find a rental property. So the age old question, do, do I buy, do I rent, do I kind of throw my hands up in the air and go somewhere else? Well, it, it, you know, <laughs> it, it all depends on where you're at in your stage of your finances, but I'm always going to say it's better to buy than it is to rent. Um, a lot of people don't think about the added benefits of owning a home just besides the fact that you're owning a home, you're getting tax deductions. You can deduct your mortgage interest and you can deduct your property taxes, which at the end of the year is going to get you a nice refund on your on your, on your your uh, income taxes. So that's one added benefit besides owning the home itself, so you have that tax benefit. Um, the other thing is you have stability, because a lot of what we're seeing, and goes back to what we were talking about, the rentals, the investors that are cashing out, these renters are scrambling to try and find a rental property because the owner selling the house. They have no control over that. So when you buy your house, it's yours. You, you, no one's going to kick you out unless your wife gets mad that he kicks you out the door. But, um, but you know, that's that's typical. Um, that's my opinion as far as buying versus renting. Now, what about those that maybe want a second home? Is the market still right for that, or? I think that I think the investors that are looking for a second home right now, I think that sh that ship has sailed in the last two years. A couple of years ago, you could find some decent priced homes and 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 make that cash flow work, but right now the prices have come up so much that it really doesn't make sense to buy a, a home for five hundred fifty or six hundred thousand dollars and and turn it into a rental. The cash flow just doesn't make sense at this time. So I'm gonna throw you a curveball then. Where sure. where do you see the best value to kind of buy a house, I'd play it out for the long run, you know, outside of East County. Outside of East County, um, you're probably looking at Stockton. Stockton is, you know, they're, they're really starting to get their, get back in shape again after all the shakeup they had financially. Home prices are still really low. The only issue with that is, is the commute. Um, and the crime. And the crime. <laughs> yeah, that, there is that. Um, but if you're looking at other places outside of East County, um, I know that Vallejo is probably another good one. Benicia is really good. Um, but for the most part, if you were going to stay in East County, I think your best dollar to be spent in real estate actually is going to be in Antioch. So John, how does one go about finding a realtor? What are, what are some tips on, on making sure that you find the right fit and you know, how do you do that process? I think probably the best way to start if you're looking for a realtor, you can go online and you can look at ratings from Yelp and other services like that. But the best way to find a realtor is to talk to your family and friends. They're the people that, that you trust, you know, when you help you make decisions and you look for advice to that's the same with a realtor. If they've had someone that they've worked with in the past and that, you know, they feel comfortable with, um, that's definitely the first place to start. The second thing is you can always check with um, the association, the Delta Association of Realtors. Um, you know they have a listing of all the realtors that are in the area, how long they've been in the business, you know what kind of sales they've had. Um, so you can look at look that up as a secondary secondary um, way of finding a realtor. Um, you know one of the things that I, I think is important is is that if you have a if you find someone that has a good referral rate. Uh, where they get a lot more referrals than they do for advertising that speaks volumes about the type of business that they do. Aside from yourself, who are, who are some uh, referrals that you would recommend to people? <laughs> Use John. I have. Use John, but yes. if you're not. I, I, there's a few. Um, I would say first and foremost, Jody Murphy at Sharp Realty. Uh, Jody's an outstanding realtor. Um, she's very sharp, no pun intended. 
Um, but she's she's she knows she's very knowledgeable of the area. She's been here a while, like I have, um, and uh, she's done very well. Uh, of course, you know if you're looking for a ranch property, uh, Lori Abram, my broker, is is the best in the business. Um, she's had some major transactions. Uh, she was uh, sold Hannah Nicole, and uh, and uh, the uh, what is it? It's the Lear, Lear Vineyards. Thank you. Now I, I'm trying to remember the other name. It's um, now Campos. Campos. There you go. Um, so Lori is probably your best bet when you're looking at a ranch property. She's very knowledgeable and she's a go-getter. Um, so you know those would be the first two people on my list. Are you sure she just doesn't like wine? Uh, no, I think she <laughs> likes wine. Okay. So. As do you. Oh, as, yes, I do. Got it. Um, one of the things that's been kind of creeping up, you know, kind of a hot button, is the Deer Ridge Shadow Lakes. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to call it a fiasco, but it kind of is right now because it's so up in the air. You guys, not you, but the Brentwood City Council had to approve an EIR process, which basically gets the ball rolling on will this be, will this be environmentally okay and what are the impacts. How's that impacted that area? One of the things, let me, let me start off by saying is one of the things about real estate is it's affected by the same thing as the financial market. Fear is a very big factor in, in how things work in the real estate market. So if you're afraid of something, it has a tendency to grow. Um, uncertainty, fear, and, and people start to get very concerned about you know, their futures. Um, and I preface this because a lot of people, when you think about all of the folks that live in those two communities that made it through the recession and, oh, I've got my values back, and then this project comes along, that brings back a lot of that, you know, those anxieties and stuff from the recession. So I think that's a lot of what's driving the concerns that everyone has right now, aside from the project itself. Um, there has been, um, when from the beginning of the year through the end of April, um, sales were pretty typical of, of what was going on in Brentwood, but since the meetings began the end of April, beginning of May, through the end of July, sales are down 21% in both communities. As an average, they're down 21%, and then values have also dropped 7% over that same time. Um, you know, now there were a few higher price sales in the beginning of the year, and that sometimes skews the number li a little bit, but still, when you're looking at a 5 to 6% decrease over a two and a half month period, it's significant, um, you know, so people are concerned because, you know, not everyone all has the facts. Um, a lot of the folks that are involved with, um, you know, the, the community action, they're trying to get their point across to the council. I think they're doing a good job, but I still think that, you know, that all the details have not come out yet and you have to look at the whole picture sure. in order to see where everything's going to go. The AIR is the first step. There could be a lot of things in the EIR that could come out that could really, you know, sabotage the whole project. Um, there hasn't been an EIR that's been done in that area since 1998, 1999, when the two developments were originally um, uh, put into place. So they could come back and say, well, these um, lands that weren't environmentally sensitive before are now environmentally sensitive. So that could be a factor. There's a lot of parts to this. So it's a little early to push the panic button, so to speak, until we have all the facts. And would um, fire service be a part of that? Or lack of fire service, I should say? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that any growth that Brentwood is experiencing right now or looking at really needs to take into the, the fire district. I, you know, I, it's no secret I ran for city council and one of the things that was a big deal to me was the fact that we needed to look at, you know, certain measures to on um, growth in order to still not o not overburden the fire service more than it is already. Um, and unfortunately that hasn't happened. And my biggest concern is is that if we put a project like this together, it's just gonna add more, um, you know, with the type of communities that they're thinking of putting in. It, it is gonna affect, because most of the calls for the fire district are Somerset and summer, you know, the Somerset communities and the senior communities. Um, Cortuna, Westmont, you know, they're, they're getting a lot of those calls from there. So if we add, you know, 500 plus units with a thousand more people, you know, that, that could be a recipe for disaster. Sure. And so, you know, and I don't want to put this whole issue on you or anything like that, but are you 
seeing impacts of the fire service in East County of impacting home prices or insurance rates? Have you seen any of that? I've, the insurance rates definitely have been an issue, especially out in Bethel Island. We did see some people that, that were out, especially now that the Knightson station is closed. Um, we're seeing that impacted where people were paying nine hundred to a thousand dollars a year for homeowners insurance, and now they're paying four thousand dollars a year because they're outside of that five mile limit that the um, insurance companies rate for for homeowners. So we are seeing that effect. It it would definitely have an impact, say, on Delta Coves, which is the development that's in the middle of Bethel Island that they're trying to get up and running again. That could seriously have an impact on the values of those properties that they tried to sell them at this time. Um, in the rest of the county, you know, I, I haven't seen anything yet. I think people, and I, I'm, I'm saying this a little tongue-in-cheek, but I still think a lot of people have their head in the, th in the sand thinking that, no, everything's going to be okay. It's not going to happen to me. I, I have fire sprinklers in my house. My house is not going to burn down. Well, there's earthquakes. There's, um, and we, you know, we have those. There are other disasters or other things that can happen to your home other than a fire. There's vehicles in the houses. Vehicles in the houses. We've, you know, <laughs> we've had those, you know. Um, so those are things that I think um, at some point there's going to be, a, in my opinion, there's going to be a tipping point where we're going to have to make some serious decisions in relation to growth in the fire district. I don't think we're quite there yet, but I think we're close. Well, that's a deep topic so let's <laughs> it's always a deep topic let's uh find something a little more happy here so let's go there with the wine what, what's your favorite wine in east county um i quite honestly my two favorites are, are both from bloomfield um becky becky bloomfield's viognier and the devil's daughter are my two favorite wines from east county so by, by far that's a good wine yeah they're by far my favorite so um, the heroic red that uh, they were making out at Lear was also uh, one of my favorites. I actually still have two bottles in my wine fridge that I'm saving for some special occasion sometime. But uh, those are my favorite East County wines. Nice. And then as a you know past president of Rotary, you guys have done some pretty great projects. I know you do the cycling in Napa mm -hmm. to that's, raise money. Yeah, that's raising money for the Pathway Home, which is a PTSD in home uh, PTSD program for soldiers. Uh, it's a great program. Uh, we're huge supporters. Uh, over the years that we've um, supported the race, we've given them anywhere, I think it's around $71,000 over the last eight years we've raised for that cause. Uh, and then one of the things that we have coming up this year, which we're really excited about, we do every year, is we're getting ready to do the dictionary distribution. And, and the Rotary Club is going to give a, a actual dictionary to every third grade student in both the Brentwood and Oakley School Districts in Knightson. So that's a fun project because the kids, I, you think the kids would go, you know, why would I want a dictionary? But they love them. Yeah. They absolutely love them. So that's a fun project that we're getting ready to do too. Do you think we'll ever get to the point where you just give everybody a Kindle or something? <laughs> it may, yeah, someday. You never know. They're cheap enough now. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> what a. Now, why did you get into Rotary, and, and what's it meant to you? I got into Rotary, my father-in-law, Charles Graham Jr., uh, dad was in Rotary for 45 years, and he always had this camaraderie and, 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 and feel for service, and, and I picked up on that from him over the years, and, and when I got into um, real estate, I knew that I needed to be part of the community, and what better way than to be part of Rotary. And over the years of being a Rotarian, it's, you, there's a day where you, you join Rotary and then there's the day when you actually become a Rotarian. And that's when you finally realize the work that you're doing and the things that you're doing are impacting your community and the world. Um, my wife and I actually went to the International Convention for Rotary and it was in Atlanta in June and it was an amazing experience because we were there with 43,000 other like-minded people, people that believe in the truth and believe in being fair and believe in, in, in you know, those things that, you know, of, er, things that benefit everyone. That's part of the four-way test, as you know now, being a Rotarian yourself. So what is the four-way test? Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? <laughs> Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And he's wearing his pin. And I'm wearing my pin and my Rotary shirt. So, yeah. you know, it, it's funny when you're in Rotary and you get that you, and when you start living it, how can you go wrong being part of an organization when the first thing in their motto is, is it the truth? That That's a powerful thing. And being at the convention was amazing because we met people from all over the world 
um, and different projects that they're working on and sharing different ideas. We picked up some ideas for our club. I shared some things that we were doing for with a gentleman from Connecticut, and you would have thought I gave him a gold nugget. Yeah, so just, just to tie it back to the whole real estate you know, scenario going on right now, do you think that we're we're kind of entering a bubble or do you think it's just going to be pretty consistent? Well, that's a good question because a lot of people ask that, you know, are we in, are we in a real estate bubble? And a lot of what the, if you compare the two times, the great recession versus now is back in the great recession, all of those notes and all of those loans were funny money is what we called it. Um, you know, if you could fog a mirror, you could get a loan was essentially what we were saying. So there was no, there was no capital. There was no, real dollars behind those, and that's why the collapse happened as badly as it did. Over the years, over the last several years, a lot of the homes that have been purchased have been 20% down or cash. Uh, anywhere from 30 to 33% of the homes that were purchased in the last five years were purchased with all cash. So there's real money behind the values that are there right now. Um, if we're going to see a decline in the market, it's going to be related more to what's going on in the government, as far as the federal government is concerned, and what happens with interest rates and what happens with the changes possibly in the tax code because there's some there's some very interesting things that people are looking at as far as they're they're looking at taking away the more uh, the um, property tax deductions. That's on a second home though, right? And well that's second home in California, but there's also the federal government is in California, well in general, you can write off the pre taxes you pay in the state, which us also includes our property taxes. Well the federal government is looking to take that deduction away which in California could equate to $17,000 per person, that they'd be losing that tax deduction, which would affect the housing market. Because one of the things I said earlier was, one of the big benefits of owning your home is that tax deductibility for your mortgage interest and your taxes. So the second home thing, yes, that is true. You know, If you look at a lot of investors that have got one or two or five or 10 homes, they're gonna lose that deduction as well. So, so is there a bubble or? Too early Not a bubble. Go. I think it's too early to tell right now, but I do think that our market can only go as long and as hard as it is right now. I think at some point it's going to have to slow down just because if jobs start slowing down, then the need for housing is going to start slowing down. But one of the other things that we're also looking at is, and a lot of people don't understand, is that the economy itself and the fact that California doesn't want to build a lot of homes is also going to hurt our economy because if you create all these new jobs and these people need places to live and California is not building any new housing, you know, we are building, you see new houses, but what I'm saying is more high density residential within cities and, and, and local municipalities that's affordable to people like, you know, like my daughter. My daughter couldn't afford to, afford to buy a house in Brentwood right now because even though she makes good money, her and her fiance, um, they're still not in a position where they can do that because there's just not enough housing to go around for everybody. So that could also hurt our economy as well because if we can't bring, bring people to fill these jobs, they're gonna have to go elsewhere and then these companies are not gonna have employees. So that's, you know, that could be something else that would drive down the market. I don't think we're gonna see like we did at the Great Recession. I think there's too many safeguards in place right now to keep that from happening. But you could see a five to 10% dip in values over the next two years, so. Not enough to sell your home, though. Not enough to sell my home. <laughs> my crystal ball is not working very well lately, got so it. I, you know, it's a little cloudy. It's a little cloudy. Okay, got it. So ride, ride more bikes. There you go. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate Always. you and your knowledge that you provide in the industry. You've been a big help to me and in, in making the decision to join Rotary in Antioch. Good decision. Um, you know, you've been a good friend in terms of real estate advice, um, just life advice, and even. So I just want to say thank you for coming on and thank you. tackling the, the real estate industry and join us next time as we'll have another guest and we'll keep on just talking about East County issues with people in the community. Thank you.